about to see is an underground house. It's built into the ground and it's heated by sunlight. It's pretty different from what you're used to. This is the driveway leading up to it. What you see is the top part of the house and in a minute you'll get a closer view of it. This is the walkway leading up to it. And the front part is all glass <clears throat> so it can let in sunlight. It's facing south, actually a little bit southeast and those panels are about eight feet tall and so when the sun shines and even on cloudy days quite a bit of sunlight comes through and heats it up that's our cat one of them that's noisy you can see why there are two ways in one is on the right i'll show you that in a minute and one on the left, I call it the tunnel way, because there's a tunnel that goes down into the house. And that lets cold air in in the summertime. Cold air goes through the tunnel and into the house to cool it down. If you follow the walkway down, you go into a little, what I call a atrium area outside on the east end of the house and you can sit down there it's kind of a little um, patio area and around the edge we often have a garden it's burned out right now because we're getting it ready for garden this year that's noisy he wants to go in Hey, too bad. Too bad, Buster. And this is the atrium that we're standing in. And uh, I'll turn the camera around and you can see the steps coming down from the walkway. That block standing up there, that's to keep the sprinkler from coming down here when it turns around. Along the edge there is all where we have a garden. This is steps that lead out to a pond. I'll show you that in a little bit and the steps out this way lead out to what used to be a pump a hand pump when we had it that's a sprinkler up there and a hose that got burned because no one was paying attention we'll go inside now we'll take noisy in come on noisy come on oh come on kids come on in Okay, now you're inside. We just came down a few steps and you're looking to the west. That's uh, part of the kitchen area you see right in front of you. And further down is a sort of a greenhouse. That whole area was going to be a greenhouse, but it kind of got scaled down when we realized we didn't really want to take care of plants forever and ever. And past that end wall is a bedroom. I'll show you in a minute. Now we're standing by the bedroom wall looking back. There's Noisy. He can't seem to get out of the picture. <coughs> hey. Hey, Noisy. Um, right over um, against that white wall, that's where we came in. This is the dining room area. And uh, what used to be a sitting area right here for watching TV which used to be right over here but now that's been changed around a little bit and it's just kind of a area to take a nap or do whatever you want now you're looking into the living room area and I'll swing the camera around here 
And you can see these big posts that hold up the house. It's got earth on the roof, which you'll see when we get outside. There's a wood stove that's used to heat it when it gets really cold in the winter time. If it's a sunny day, we don't need the heat at all in the winter. And I'm trying to get it so that we don't need the wood stove even on cloudy days. It does heat up on cloudy days, um, but not as much as I'd like it to. Hey, Noisy, get out of the picture. He's just like third graders, he doesn't listen. And this is the kitchen area, a little closer up view. And there's the microwave oven. And a gas stove. Now I'm standing in the living room and I'm looking to the south and I'm going to show you the windows up above. Uh, the camera's going to change here a little bit because of the lighting. Here's the glass from down below as you're looking out. And those flaps hanging down, those are shutters that uh, I'm trying to get so they can shut easily. I have them partially worked out. Maybe I can show you that in a little bit. But there's still a fair amount of work to be done on them. And there's the big beams that hold up the roof. It's a lot like a spud cellar. In fact, I looked at spud cellars quite a bit before I built this place. And by the way, I built every wall and every thing you see in here myself. My kids say they help, but all I really did was get in the way. Uh, behind that wall is the bathroom. And there's the TV, VCR. What's a house without them, huh? And a speaker and some pictures that my wife got from a store in Idaho Falls. These are pretty interesting pictures. Let me show you one or two. These are some uh, uh, it's a little coyote family, little baby coyotes that are very similar to dogs. I don't know who the artist was. And here's three hungry guys looking for probably a third grader or maybe their teacher. Uh, I think that's uh, Ralph S. Mouse and he's trying to get away as usual. Hmm, glad I'm not him. Those are doors to Aaron's room, and I won't dare open them because we'll get lost in the junk. Now I'm going to turn the camera right behind me, and you're looking down a hallway, which goes to uh, a study area and a bedroom. We'll take a look around this right bend here. And this is the bathroom. And I'm showing you this because it um, we have a well outside that I'll show you in a few minutes that um, is powered by solar electricity and all the water comes from that well to run the sink and the toilet and the shower. We'll go down the hall a little more here. And in this door on the right, this is where Dr. Gearloose uh, has his little laboratory and practices for Dr. Gearloose, in case you've ever wondered about that. And this is Dr. Gearloose's study area where he does all his lesson planning, which he does every night like a good little boy. And looking to the south, you can see the bedroom that's behind that wall I, that I first showed you. And we'll go up these stairs here in just a second and see what's up there. Well, there's the stairs we came up. And if we look around up here, you'll see there's a little loft. It's not quite finished yet. This is where Mr. Hoffman may put some carpet this summer. And, uh, Back here, back here is a little couch you can sit on and look out. It's kind of hot up here now. There needs to be a blower up here to 
pull the hot air down and circulate it better. And from way up here we can look down and see the kitchen area and some of the big plants that are growing up from the greenhouse and over towards the living room area. Over here I'm going to show you the pantry. If you go in here, there's a refrigerator. It's a gas refrigerator. And this room stays pretty cool. In the summertime it's fairly cool in here usually. At the end of the summer it warms up a bit. But in the winter you don't need to use the refrigerator because this has vents to the outside. And this is an insulated door. So it can stay cool most of the year. And it has uh, a bunch of shelves back here. It's a little hard to see because it's kind of dark right now. Bye. This is where we came in. And uh, at the top of these stairs, I want to show you something. This, you see, under this milk crate, is what's called an inverter. And the inverter, it's a little dusty. It probably shouldn't be that dusty. But um, this makes the batteries, like you have in your car, it makes them change electricity. So it's like electricity you have in your house. It goes from 12 volts to 110 volts. It's pretty amazing piece of machinery. They didn't invent these until a couple of years ago, at least not the good kind like this. And that cost about $1,200 to do that, but it does a really good job. It runs the um, stereo and the video and the power tools and the microwave. You have to not use uh, anything you want. You can't just leave your light switches on because you will run out of electricity. All the electricity in this house comes from the sun. And I'm going to show you how that works outside in a minute. But there's no wires to the power company coming into this place. So I don't have to pay Utah Power and Light or Idaho Power and Light $50 a month or $100 a month. This, all the electricity is free because it comes from the sun. The only thing is you have to be really careful that you don't use too much of it. If you use too much, then your batteries run down, and then you have to light your candles. That's the door we just came out of. Behind that door is the inverter. And this little area is a tool area out here with a workbench and some tools. My kid loses them all the time. And this little room back here is uh, kind of the other side of the tool room. There you see some big batteries. Those are um, old phone company batteries, but they're in very good shape. And I use those and some other carb type batteries down in the house. That's a water tank there. And uh, these batteries hold a lot of electricity. This is kind of a messy area, but you can get the idea what's going on here. This big water drum has pipes that go to the outside and the water comes from a well about 70 feet down and when that um, rod floats up there's a, um, some styrofoam on the end of it when the tank gets filled with water the styrofoam goes higher because the water goes higher and it pushes the rod up and turns the switch which changes the electricity shuts it off so that the pump outside down 70 feet in the well shuts off and the water shuts off. When water gets used into the house uh, and there's another pump that does that uh, it's it's the one behind the 2x4 there on the right you can see part of it. When uh, the water gets used into the house it pulls it out of the barrel pushes it into the house they have regular water pressure. Uh, I'll show you that in just a minute and then the Styrofoam goes down because the water goes down, the switch goes on, and electricity goes to the pump down below 70 feet, and water comes back in, and the rod goes up. Pretty clever, huh? I thought so. It used to be when people said, do you have running water? I said, oh yeah, whenever we need some, the kids run out and get it from the hand pump well. And we still have the hand pump well, but now it's regular water. Uh, cold and hot. The hot is really hot. 
In fact, you really can't leave your hand under it for very long. You can see some steam, I think, coming out. And there's a gas water heater. That's right around behind this wall. I'll show you that. That's uh, Palomar gas water heater. And uh, they're used all around Europe. They're very common. I'm going to turn the water on. Hang on a sec. And you can hear it come on. I don't know if you can see the gas too well. Maybe a little bit right in the middle there. Can you see that? I'll zoom in. See the gas uh, heating elements come on in there. And uh, it works really well. In fact, if I had a regular house, I'd probably put this in. It costs about uh, $250. But you don't have to heat up a big water tank and leave it hot all the time. You just get the gas turned on just when you turn the water on. It's called a demand heater because uh, when you demand the hot water, it comes on. Pretty clever, eh? Before we go totally outside, I thought I'd show you how the fluorescent light works. I gotta figure out how to hide these wires still one of these days, but you turn on the switch and on comes a light. It's a four foot fluorescent and it works just like a regular house light, except it runs on 12 volts. Some of the house is on 12 volts, like a car or an RV, and some of it like the um, computer or the microwave runs on 110 volts. Okay? I almost forgot this really clever invention of mine, uh, which my boy helped me invent. Uh, you're looking right now up the ladder at a shutter, and I'm going to pull a string down below and uh, when I pull the string, you'll see what happens to that shutter, I hope. Okay. Those panels right there are power 